Hello fellow ants. In today's video, we will be showing you how to set up stable diffusion using RunPod. It's an online GPU renting services that is widely used for machine learning with competitive price. I recommend you to use RunPod if you don't have strong GPU on your PC or laptop. And besides that, RunPod's interface is also quite simple and easy to navigate. Now, let's get into the tutorial. The first step, we will go directly to RunPod's website where I'm typing runpod.io and click login. Before you proceed this video, make sure you top up a sufficient amount of balance into your account. You can check it on the top right corner over here for your account balance. And the first page, it will show you this, the secure cloud, which has a lot of uh, secure GPU systems. So now, secure cloud has quick response times to minimize any interruptions when it comes to important and business-related tasks. But besides that, the price for the secure cloud will be higher than the community cloud. And since we just want to use for stable diffusion, we can use uh, the GPU from the community cloud, which offers the same range of GPU types, but with lower pricings. And for this video, I will be choosing the RTX 3090 later, but before that, to run stable diffusion program inside the run pod, we need to choose the templates. So because we are going to set up stable diffusion, so we'll be selecting the run pod stable diffusion and just click deploy. So now the template is selected over here. Now I'm going to select our GPU. And in this video, like I said before, I will be selecting the RTX 3090. We have chosen the 3090. The GPU is sufficient enough to generate images and it only costs $0.44 per hour on the run pod. But feel free if you want to select the other pods too. Before creating your pod, you need to click Customize Deployment first and you will be given the option to change the numbers over here. There are container disk and volume disk. I suggest you to set it up between 300 until 500 gigabytes and this will be depending on your usage too. Since I will be generating lots of images later, I will set it up to 500 gigabyte. And for the container disk, I think setting it to 50 gigabyte is more than enough. Now, after all is set, let's click the Set Overrides button. Now, after all the override setting is applied and all configuration is set, let's click Continue. And right now, after all the setting is correct, then you can just click Deploy. And you can wait while your pod is being built. But meanwhile, also show you that, of course, RunPod will charge to your storage. And if you're wondering how they charge, RunPod will charge $0.1 per gigabytes per month for all storage on running pods and $0.2 per gigabyte per month for volume storage on stopped pods. Perhaps you can determine how many storage that you want first on the first run. It's alright because you can actually change the numbers later. Okay, so now my run pod stable diffusion is already running. You will see it inside the my pods over here. And as you can see, it's all zero percentage, which is what we want. Wait until the GPU or CPU utilization percentage is at zero before attempting to connect over here. If you try to connect before the pod is ready, you will likely receive a 502 error. So since all is ready, we can click connect. And every time you connect to your pod, they will give you access to two ports over here the port 3000 and port 8888. Now, if your port is not ready yet, it's all right because you can check your logs over here to see that if your pod is still setting up or it just uh, stops in between. And because you just launched this pod, so it's running a pre-start script, so it might take a while until your pod is ready. Now, let's just wait while it's being loaded. Now, let's check the log again. Nice, all the script has been running. Next, we go back to the previous page and check whether the two ports are ready or not. Both of the port is ready to be used. And usually for the port 3000 is for the Stable Diffusion Web UI interface. And meanwhile, the 888 port is to access the Jupyter Notebook. And let's click the 8888 port first. This will direct you to the Jupyter Notebook. And this is where you can access all the folders and files and terminals to run the command. And you might also keep in mind that you want to save all of your folders later on the workspace. So 
So inside this folder workspace, there's Stable Diffusion Web UI. You can just click it and it will be the same folders like the Stable Diffusion usually. Moving on, let's open the Stable Diffusion Web UI from the port 3000. Now it's opening and let's see if the port works or not. Okay, so this is the interface for the port 3000, which is the Stable Diffusion Web UI. And there's already an, a downloaded checkpoint, SDV15. And in here, you can try to generate an image first, maybe. And let's see if it generates or not. So here's our first generated images. And you can check the image inside this folder. So now we see this folder outputs. And in here, you will see the generated image early. All the images generated in the future will be saved automatically in this folder too. Because we only have one checkpoint, which is the SDV15 CKPT. And if you want to add another models into your stable diffusion, then you can use port 8888 to download the model from other platforms. For example, I will go to Civitai and I'll choose the Magic Make Realistic. I'll copy the link over here and go to the models folder stable diffusion and this will be the folder where you want to save all of your ckpt models and in here you just click the terminal and make sure that the folder is the correct folder for the path and you just type wget paste the link from the civitai and enter and you will see that it's downloading, but the name will be changed into this uh, series of number. It's okay. We can rename it later on. And sometimes the loading will take a while. It depends on how many gigabytes the size are, but it wouldn't taking a long time for a download. And you can see from the estimated time here, it's around 30 seconds. So yeah, we will just wait. Okay, so now all of the loadings are completed and you see that the checkpoint is being saved under this series number and you might want to rename it. And don't forget to always put dot .save sensors behind the file because if not, the stable diffusion won't be able to detect it. And okay, so I move to the stable diffusion tab and in here you might don't see it, but let's click refresh and that's it. The new checkpoint has appeared and let's try to generate another image using this new checkpoint okay so we have another image and if you want to see the file again then you just go to the outputs folder earlier if you guys use text to image feature then the output will be inside the text to image name folder but if you guys use image to image then it's vice versa that's all for the tutorial of how to set up stable diffusion on runpod if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. If you want to discuss more with us, join our Discord and other community from the link in the description box below. Until next time!